Oh, we are headed to Phillies Yankees World Series. I'm calling it now, bro. Really? NLCS continues wow. today, game two on FS1. Bryce Harper and the Phillies take on Manny Machado and the Padres. Coverage begins 3 30 Eastern, 12 30 Pacific. Simulcast both on Fox and FS1. It's weird and wonderful time. We're going to start off with the weird Sixers Celtics. Harden drops Marcus Smart and then puts <laughs> up a you. horrid shot yeah. through. Who should be more embarrassed here? Harden. Good oh, call. He should. Yeah. More on this game in a second. Moving on to the wonderful you got Guardians Yankees. Got a smart slid. Ten yards. Torres man. with the <laughs> put out. Player of the year. And the Rock Careful. the baby. Rock Ooh, I like it. Rock the baby. He just they won't it let it fast. go. Yankees. They will not let it go. Yeah, he going to wake the baby up, though. You got to do a little slow. Yankees Astros tonight, 737. And finally, the weird. We're back to the garden. Embiid with a UFC arm bar. Ooh. Smart with a kind of trip. It could have been worse, if, if yeah, but thanks to the maturity of Marcus oh. Smart, Ooh. nothing happened. Take a listen. Like I said, it's maturity. You know, I could have cracked his head open, but I didn't. And that's the maturity we had, you know what I'm saying? So we move on from it. It is what it is, and control what we control. A select and secretive committee of analysis. Intellectuals and rapscallions convene in Nick's living room <laughs> to burn the midnight oil and concoct the best segment in all of sports television. That's right. It's time for Nick's tier. Thank you, and we do have a short show today, so let's get right to it. Ne- the teams at the bottom of the tiers, teams that don't even make the tiers. Uh. And the Cardinals are there on purpose. The Cardinals right now are the worst team in football. They're poorly coached. The offense stinks. Yikes. The defense not much better. They're the worst team in football. Now, hanging by a thread. These teams... Any of them lose this week, they're off the tiers next week. I hate oh. to put Jackson Miller, but I have to. The Raiders got a bye week. It was the, one of their best weeks of the year this week, the bye week with the Broncos, <laughs> we already know. All right, next. I don't believe you. Oh. I'm sorry, I just don't believe you. All of these teams have three or four wins. I want to believe in Seattle and Atlanta. They would be such wonderful stories moving off their long-term quarterbacks and then all of a sudden having a better season than they did with those quarterbacks. Indy. All three of its wins have come in the final seconds, and the Jets, I I know you have two resounding wins in a row, but you're still the Jets. Next, living off reputation. If you had not watched football ever before this season, Rams, Ravens, Packers, and Bucks, you'd say, yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Instead, all of them still have top 12 Super Bowl odds purely because of the reputation, most notably, of their quarterbacks and what they have done in seasons past. Next, begrudging. Look who's back! I mean, I I, I can't believe <laughs> the shocking. Patriots have done it. Wow. I can't. These oh, four man. teams over the last three weeks are a combined ten and two, and the two losses one came to the Eagles this past week by Dallas, and the other was the Patriots in overtime with a backup quarterback who's now obviously their better quarterback. Okay. The Titans under Vrabel just find ways to win, and the Giants are five and one. Got to respect them. All right, next tier, unique tier. 2019 LSU. Hmm. That might be the best college football team ever. Right. We're finding out why. Jamar Chase, Justin <laughs> Jefferson, Joe Burrow. <laughs> Turns out it's good enough to be pretty damn good in the NFL as well. These two teams, are, it's just the Vikings, Justin Jefferson, and pieces. The, the Bengals, it's Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, and pieces. And they're legitimate contending teams. 2019 LSU. Turns out pretty good team. Get healthy. This tier. All three of these teams are championship weekend caliber if they get whole. Right now, they are not whole. The bu- injuries for the Niners are brutal. And for the Chargers, uh, we know how bad they are. And for the Dolphins, obviously, it's Tua. What's up, bro? I got to step in here. Dallas, you tried to give them a little respect. I don't think you did. They should be on this tier, Nick. First of all, I, I think they're as good or better than any of those three teams. And wow. they do fit the get healthy mode too, because now Dak will be back. So I gotta, you gotta put Dallas up there. They're better than Cincinnati I, and Minnesota. I good think. argument. So I understand what you're saying. My argument would be Dallas is already healthy now that Dak is back, and I don't. The I'm gonna just sneak in a take here on Micah Parsons. All right. Micah Parsons has been unbelievable. Micah Parsons has been the defensive player of the year up to this point. Everyone though is saying ah. He's like Lawrence Taylor, and then assigning him the impact of Lawrence Taylor. I want to dial that back just a bit. I think Micah Parsons doesn't continue to play like Lawrence Taylor as he has the first month of the season. Mm -hmm. Cowboys even take a bit of a step back as well. I'm fine with where I have the Cowboys. All right, now what everyone's waiting for. Where, oh where, 
do I have the Bills, the Chiefs, and of course the undefeated Eagles. Best two teams, reveal it. Ah, it's really hard to say who's better, the Bills or the Chiefs. That team, <laughs> is it? The chi- I, mean, I don't know. Love the Chiefs it. had a lead with less than 90 seconds remaining. The Bills got a score. The Chiefs didn't. Everybody knows they're the best two teams. Everybody knows that those two teams, no matter the record, are head and shoulders above everyone else. The Bills won a coin flip game, so we give them credit. Mr. James Jones, I am told you have an issue at this point of the tiers. I do, because I think Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings should be up there in those best, it should be best three teams, right? Really? The Minnesota wow. Vikings is playing really good football. And it pains me as a Green Bay Packer, it pains me to say that. But when you look at you talked about Justin Jefferson. Yes. Big reason why. But Kirk Cousins doesn't get the respect neither, right? Strictly because he hasn't won in the big games, in the playoffs and all that, right? Neither has Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen has to get over that playoff hump too right? It's point. about winning Super Bowls, right? Josh Allen hasn't been there. Kirk Cousins hasn't been there. So for me, it's not about the regular season. It's about playoffs for these two quarterbacks. But when you talk about teams, they run the football. They got a superstar receiver. They get after the passer. They got a really good defense. Patrick Peterson is playing at a high level. They need to be up there with those two best teams. It needs to be the best wow. three teams oh. in the NFL. Wow. Okay. So the, my issue for the Vikings just quickly, playing Detroit, takes an insane comeback in the final five minutes to win. They did everything they could to blow that game against New Orleans, the early morning London game, and they trailed the Bears, who haven't been on the tiers for one moment all year, Mm -hmm. with three minutes left. So I give them respect, but I don't think they're as good as the Bills or Kansas. It's all about winning. That's fair. (laughs) All that leaves, speaking of it's all about winning, is the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. Listen, to me they're undefeated, but they're not unquestioned wilds, and my point is very simple. I got to figure out what's going on with them offensively in the second half of these games. Good Every point. game, it seems, five of their six yeah. games, they jump out to these huge first half leads. They hold on for dear life. I want to know what's happening there. But as long as they're undefeated and they're the only undefeated, they will remain at the top of the tiers. Go Excellent well. tiers as always. I have one small change. And, you know, usually I like to do these petitions with the enthusiasm of LeBron hugging an opponent while he's down 20. But this time, I do it. <laughs> Begrudgingly. The New York Jets probably need to move up. I am sorry. Wow. They do. To They're where? four and two. The They're Jets? probably moving up two tiers. First number one reason. The prince that was promised. Yes, I'm talking about Zach Wilson. Oh, Flacco's not walking through that door anymore. Joe, I mean, excuse me, Zach Wilson, three and oh, 30 points a game, two giveaways, getting it done. Reason number two. Look at this saucy attitude. Uh, now this Sauce guy's Garner, amazing. James, you'll I love like this. this video. I, like I put in a Packers video for you, James. Uh, <laughs> Sauce, that had to smoke, you, you, knew I was, it. you knew I was leaving oh, the you know what? Yeah, Here's good. the thing. Not talking trash if you can back it up. Lowest pass rating allowed. Now, granted, this is a dusty graphic because there's two Eagles up there. But at the bottom, there's Sauce Gardner. And reason number three. Mm. Quinnen Williams, I love who yeah. prior wow. to this week, probably two biggest highlights were, number one, saying, uh, Bless you know, blessing you, himself while he was sneezing, and then yelling at his coach. All of a sudden, this guy, exactly. defensive player of the week, and we look at highest yeah. pressure rate allowed among interior DL, D linemen, whoo, there he is, number one. Yeah. So I hate to say it, I don't necessarily like the Jets, but that team is... Sneaky good. Listen, the defense is not sneaky good. The defense is legitimately good. I I understand they're undefeated since Zach came back. Zach has actually not played overwhelming. He hasn't even really played that well since he's been back. If I see a little more from Zach Wilson, we can move them up, but that defense has been unbelievable. The prince that was promised. You don't call him Zach. (laughs) You call him the prince that was promised. He's a handsome guy. He wears that like headband sometimes. It's like a little crown. It's like a little miniature crown. Hey, is there trouble in Tampa? We discuss Uh next. First Uh things first. We've got game two of the NLCS coming your way at the bottom of the hour. Frank Thomas, David Ortiz, Alex Rodriguez, and I'm Kevin Burkhardt. The Phillies with a big win last night. Can the Padres even it up with Blake Snell on the mound? We're about to find out. Can't wait to bring it to you with an hour pregame. Right now, though, Wilds, take it away. Excellent. That'll be great. Coming up in three minutes, you're now entering the No Bull Zone, sponsored by Credible Great Rates. None of the Bull. We are back here with Super Bowl champion James Jones, Big Ben had some interesting comments about Brady. Take a listen. 
because I was watching the game and, and to me, this is just my opinion. And Tom is the greatest. I mean, mm. the Super Bowl rings show it and talk about it and whatever. It didn't look like he wanted to be out there. Mm. I mean, maybe it was the pressure that, and he was getting hit and the you know whatever was going on. And I remember I, I, at one point I looked down there. I was telling I don't know if I told Jason or Brian, but I'm like, like there's no way he's enjoying this. <laughs> Ooh, whoa. James, your reaction? My reaction is. I wish I was sitting there watching the game with Big Ben because I would have said, Big Ben, shut up. Because oh. <laughs> Tom Brady, if it's anything we know about Tom Brady, Tom Brady going to give you everything he got, right? If you didn't care, he ain't going to be yelling at his linemen, dropping all them F-bombs and all that. And for Big Ben to say that, you are the king of looking like you don't care out there. <laughs> every time you get hit, every time something go bad, your body language is the worst out there. And I've seen it with my own two eyes on the same field competing against you. So for him to say this about Tom Brady, knowing that for me watching the tape, they're not that good of a football team, but it ain't about the passion that Tom Brady plays well, with. Think, so for Big Ben to say that, that's crazy. Listen, I think Tom Brady clearly and obviously wants to keep playing football. I don't think he wanted it to be for the Tampa Bay Bucks this year. I think it's, we have a lot of evidence of that and now he has no choice I do Wilds yes what do you think is more likely that Tom Brady plays in this year's Super Bowl for Tampa or that he broadcasts this year's Super Bowl for, for Fox <laughs> I, I, I don't think I don't think the Bucks are a Super Bowl team I'll say that do you think it's on the board do you think the, do you think it's on the board that Tom Brady doesn't finish the season I think I'm not predicting it and I actually think the Bucks can turn it around I but I don't think you can dismiss it as a possibility yeah I, I, well look the bottom I, I don't think he'll retire I think he'll finish the season with the Bucks and I do think they can get in the hunt in the NFC but you open yourself up to this stuff when yeah. you take the 11 day high this in training yeah. camp, when you go to a wedding the day before the game, and when you try to get to another team in the offseason. So th- this is what comes when you do those types of things, that type of questioning and speculation. Here's the thing. We, we ran the numbers with Josh. The offensive line numbers, pretty much exactly the same as last year. So it's not the offensive line. They just got to get that offense cooking. He's not playing. Hey, baseball's coming up next. Enjoy the game. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>